Good evening, everybody. It's another episode of your Welcome to My Podcast. I, of course, am Meat Bolus. We are joined by Hardstick and not WPW. He is a wall this week. I'm not sure what's going on. Have you heard anything from him? Um, so he was very concerned that I had just got back from Disney world and was super excited that while he was in California, he was going to be able to go to a theme park, but he's a fucking idiot and wasn't paying attention at all that I was in Florida, not LA. So yes, no theme parks for him. So apparently he's visiting family or something. So, oh, sad trolley noises. Beep boop. (laughs) But we do have a third tonight. I know a lot of our followers follow him on Instagram. We've got 9-1-Fun. Hello. Thank you for having me on. Hey, brother. Good to have you on. A little nervous. Hey, so I know I know a lot of my followers follow you, follow most of the uh, the uh, inner crew on Instagram. But for those that don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and leave out whatever you want, you know, no judgment here. Okay, cool. Um, and you got the person that can put the beeps in when I say something. In a- oh, yeah. Awesome. We definitely say stupid shit. So yeah, we got beeps and plenty. <laughs> cool. I'll, I'll take some beeps. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm an EMT basic. I've been a basic for like four years now. Long enough. Um, haven't bit the bullet on medic school. Thinking about it. Um, work for an ambulance company. I don't know if that's putting it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like private company. I yeah, work private, um, okay. and uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, nice. Right what, and I've, you uh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Damn. That's all right. Are, are you guys where you're at? Is it? Is it? Uh, are you primary? Is fire primary? How does your system work? That going in too far into that would definitely be a dead giveaway. Um, oh yeah, I, I work nine one one. Um, we run calls with uh, fire. It's an ALS response. Um, and even that, I don't know. I'm, I'm giving a lot away there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, so, you didn't say Pacific Northwest of what country, though? Oh, I, so you're good right now. Uh, Wakanda. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> they got to have mad benefits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. One, uh, one or of, of my brain. <laughs> um, no, it's a, it's a good system. It's a busy system run like anywhere from six to 12 calls a day. So, and it's not that bad. So, Oh, nice. So you don't get slaughtered. It depends on the day, but like not frequently. It's not like a, a, rotational occurrence like you'll have your slow days and your you'll have your slow days and you'll have your you're getting butt fucked by dispatch days and okay. it depends on your mood on that day whether or not it's which one you want i guess so fairly typical yeah nice a lot of your followers will know mm-hmm. the struggle oh yeah <laughs> how long has has 91 fun been around oh shit um <laughs> Uh, I mean, roughly, roughly. Uh, so about almost two years, I think. Uh, it'll be two years in okay. October, I believe. Um, okay. And I started it when I was working at a job that I hated, um, <laughs> and I was super <laughs> bored. <laughs> um, so I, I actually, I got a lot of my inspiration from you guys and um, from All Hazards. Shout out. And from worst responders and all all the big meme boys um, on Instagram. So I appreciate you guys for paving the way. Medic memes, of course. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you know, you came after us, but I got to say, I, yours is one of the pages that I just absolutely love. You've got definitely a unique, a unique voice in a in the meme world. Mm-hmm. And I think. Weren't you voted like nicest meme page at some point? Oh, like, shit. No. Um, or uh, most wholesome, I believe. And most wholesome, <laughs> yeah. It was a very unofficial election. Um, and I think it's literally because I don't solicit lewd photographs from my follower base. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think that's pretty much it. Like, that's, it's a low bar, but I, I, 
I somehow come out over it, I guess. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that anyone's <laughs> under the bar for doing consensual stuff with other adults, but yeah, that's what um, difficulty memeing. He said I was an Uncle Phil of meme pages. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is insane because of all the, the unsolicited um, uh, imagery that's sent Meat Bowls his way. He's, he's definitely not asking for it, but somehow it <laughs> makes it to the inbox. <laughs> Gonna have to explain that one to my wife again. Awesome. Again. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, no. Uh, I am definitely a big 9 fun fan. Thank you very much. I'm a big Meat Bowls mm -hmm. fan. Hey, who isn't? It's always nice to hear that, you know, meme pages always spur from, you know, a lot of angst and fucking inner frustration and anger. Um, it seems to be a very common, um, common thread. Um, yeah. We talked about this early on in our podcast, like how, you know, when I, I started working in the ER, like how much of that like anger kind of went away and dude, my creative or creativity dropped substantially. It's, it's fucking crazy, but God damn it. There, there's so much, you know, so much, so many spicy ass memes come from just being <laughs> fucking angry on the ambulance. It's true. So many people can relate. Yeah, no, that's hundred percent true. Yeah. There was definitely a, uh, a falling off when I went to flight of my, uh, my disdain for the planet. <laughs> and then what? Cause you weren't on the fucking planet and you were fucking <laughs> hovering above looking down at us fucking peasants <laughs> ground. Ew. <laughs> uh, How's it feel bitch to be back with us? Yeah. yeah well, my memes are slowly improving. So. <laughs> I'm my happiness and, uh, my productivity with uh, meme creation. Uh, there's definitely an exchange there. Like when I'm pissed off or, or super duper, just like in my feelings, like it, the memes are spot on. Yep. Yeah. When, when, when they come from somewhere deep down and you, you just don't hold back and you don't judge them. <laughs> that, that's when they're fucking that's platinum platinum shit right there well it's like i find a lot of like uh deep down depression and and like just shit that's been bothering me since i was four and then i'm like how can i meme this but in like an ems sort of way so that i can still you know <laughs> it's like I'm, shaping, I'm shaping ems around my pre-existing fucked upness <laughs> And that's pretty much why everybody is here in the first place is because they're fucking childhood trauma or fucking because <laughs> no one else would put up with this level of fucking dumping on constantly if they weren't damaged in some way. Clearly. Yeah. Right. What are you drinking there, hard stick? You just made a face like a fucking bulldog eating a bee. <sighs> well, this is a Lagavulin 16. It is delicious. Uh, it's just another scotch. So eventually... One of these days when uh, we do our, our in-person podcast, I'll have you give a, uh, a few of them a taste. But I got a bunch nice. that I've been collecting recently. So, And unfortunately, neither of you guys have your uh, webcams on, so I can't see your fucking scrunchy-ass faces. Oh, there, oh, no. there it is. It's coming. Maybe. Yeah, I've got this tasty uh, organic probiotic minced up mushroom fucking... <laughs> C, D, zinc, vitamin, venous fly You can just say Metamucil and no one's going to judge you. It's fine. Like, we get it. You don't have to fucking polish it up. I can't drink that this close to bed. I'll be shitting in the sheets. <laughs> and that was kind of the problem with us. Like, when we, when we first started, we were recording so early. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, dude, I, I enjoy drinking. But, God damn, if we're recording at 11 a.m., fuck. Like... You can't drink scotch right after going to the gym. I feel like a fucking sociopath. <laughs> At least drink before you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was actually a, a ritual that I would do. I would take um, uh, a shot of vodka with my pre-workout before I went to work out. <laughs> I'm not even drinking this Jesus. thing. And I don't drink anymore. That's... Yeah. Alcoholic. I mean, if that tells you anything, taking shots of vodka. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, fuck. 
And here I thought like I Red Bulls and vodka were fucking, you know, rough. Jesus. I never even thought about pre-workout and vodka. I bet fucking Tito's and C4 is the shit. Dude, it works. <laughs> it works. Dude, name that drink right now. <laughs> Own that shit. I don't want my name attached to that. Tito's and C4. It's a Mexican car bomb. Call it MS-13. <laughs> <laughs> MS-13 shots. One of our uh, local fucking hose monkeys, he used to, one, uh, like, he, he used to get into a ton of different, like, pre-workouts and fucking random shit. And remember when he was on that deer antler kick? That shit was fucking hilarious because we did we did a little research and like apparently like the deer antler extract like you need such a ridiculous amount for it to be like therapeutic at whatever the fuck he thinks it's going to be is not anywhere close to what he's doing. He had like a, a spray that he would spray on his tongue and <laughs> like, dude, there's there's no fucking way like just just eat better. I, like I, I watched you get fucking a ice cream from QT at two in the morning. Like I, whatever that deer or spray that cost you fucking a hundred dollars for, you know, the week or whatever, it's undone with the ice cream. Now, granted the fucking ice cream is delicious at two in the morning. Don't, don't get me wrong, but God damn it. Oh, he's such a oh. silly bitch. I miss him. I forgot all about the fucking deer antler. <laughs> oh, God damn. So many fucking good memes. Oh, do you ever go back meet do you ever go back and look at some of your old memes like does it does it make you cringe or and same to you 91 fun oh yeah 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 for uh because last week was the sixth anniversary of the page so and facebook doesn't make it easy to go back and look at shit. so i literally put a stack of coins on the down button on the laptop and put a weight on it and left the room and let it scroll through six years of photos <laughs> until i got to the bottom <laughs> I came back like an hour and a half later. I was like, oh, there it is. There's our first meme. Wow, that was really shitty. And then I started scrolling through and looking. And there weren't a lot of memes in the beginning. It was more, you know, me calling out Rural Metro or just making pictures of issues that I was bringing up. And then the memes started to kind of fill in and stuff. And it made me really think, because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Level Zero was great back in the day, but they really lost it. And I'm looking like, when? <laughs> when were we fucking great because this shit is trash and i think the first meme that i found that i was like all right this was a good one it was like a year and a half to two years in you know yeah it's like i, I almost wanted to burn the first year's worth of photos because they were so bad but i was like nah just leave them right because so many of like at least mine early on were like all stuff from like our old station and just you know they were direct like directly at a certain person or stupid shit right. that, you know, I, and I know, you know exactly what I'm talking about stupid shit that he used to do. And dude, they were, they were fucking awful. They were funny as fuck at the time. And also like that, that person carried that meme. It like right. my stupid comments were irrelevant. That person is just a silly bitch. And then here's me just showcasing a picture of him doing something equally stupid. Um, like doing forearm workouts, you know, while driving the ambulance. It's very important to hit the forearms. He was like still on and over the top. <laughs> Dude, to this day, I I still can't arm wrestle seriously because my my middle brother, <laughs> he would always do the rap and I'd fucking lose it. I'm like, "Dude, it doesn't matter if I'm 2 years older than him and and even if I was stronger, I'm not going to beat him." <laughs> Cuz I just start laughing. I can't I can't take it serious. What did he do that caught the food you? You ever see the movie Over the Top? Oh no, I haven't. So it's a it's a stupid fucking Stallone movie, and literally the entire premise is arm wrestling. Which what fucking asshole like greenlit and funded this movie? I mean, it's fucking stupid. But like, you had to know this is going to be stupid, and you got Stallone, so you had to pay this fucker a lot of money. And the whole the whole premise is you know that he's he's going through some shit. it's it's literally rocky but arm wrestling so a <laughs> shitty a shitty version of rocky which has already been done at that point and yeah. you know he when he he wraps you know his hand up essentially he he turns his cap backwards and he, he has a stupid line about it. it's like a switch and then his fucking mind just flips like oh it's fucking game time now we're actually gonna arm wrestle like <laughs> stupidest fucking line ever, but it's funny as fuck. And then he essentially like rolls his fingers over the top of the hand. And that, that, that gesture is what my brother would do. And I'd fucking lose it. I'm like, I can't, I can't fucking do this. 
I'm fu- I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna laugh the entire time. Doesn't matter. It's over. It's a stupid <laughs> fucking movie. You said it was in the '80s. So, uh, maybe early '90s. Oh yeah, late '80s, early '90s tops. It's it's just one of those. That, uh, God, dude, we need to do. I don't know if there would be enough uh, commentary or fucking anything interesting if we did a view party for Over the Top. I mean, I would laugh. Yeah, it's worth a shot. But I'd laugh now. My favorite part of that movie is he, he was an over the road trucker, drove an eighteen wheeler, and he had a pulley system, it mounted in his truck, and he would just do like tricep push downs <laughs> while he's driving, <laughs> just fucking mile after mile after mile. <laughs> So meats, is that why your farms are so goddamn big? Did you do that shit too, or what? Jesus, or is that just fucking all natural? Because goddamn it, I don't know where it came from. You know, I, I think it was, you know, ten years of, of woodworking, <laughs> maybe some hockey. Jesus Christ, I, I don't think I got them from lifting comic book boxes when I was running a comic shop. <laughs> you don't really build muscle then. So you said- no, I, th- I think it started with with hockey because I bought one of the, uh, you know, the pulley thing that you roll up yeah. with the to improve my slap shots and shit. And I just from there, I just kind of liked working forearms and and woodworking just really does build your grip strength and your and your forearms up. Is that the same one that you brought to our station? Like the literally the exact same one, or <clears throat> I yeah, I brought well, I brought that, but the one that stayed at the station that. That our uh, our deer antler buddy <laughs> hijacked. <laughs> that was a uh, I forget what we. Oh, it was by Marcy Fitness. Yes, and his mom's it, name was Marcy. Yes, <laughs> that's right. It's a lot of fucking. And that was when I like you shoved your arm into and then just did. <laughs> right. Which makes it great for when you're driving. You just stick your arm out the window and. <laughs> <laughs> work those flexors. Oh God, I got, I have such a great video of him um, driving the ambulance to a Snoop Dogg song, working his arm, his forearm <laughs> outside the window down downtown Glendale. Fuck, that was amazing. He's <laughs> such a fucking clown. I love that kid. Oh, we're going we to put that on the internet once he becomes fucking captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, soon, soon. I have like no context for these machines that you were talking about. These, these, so my <laughs> imagination is going fucking wild right now. <laughs> I have, I'm gonna have to look it up. And I, oh, I'm sure it, we can put the pictures in the uh, the the non spoiler spoiler thing as well. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Stupid fucking form workout stuff. But yeah, he would. God damn it, dude. And he was he was at his peak. When when I was his partner for a while, God, all the stupid shit he used to do. Um, I, I, you know, what? we're just gonna make this episode all about him, about deer antler. So there we go, <laughs> dude. We came back at the end of the shift, and I remember there was a fucking pigeon that looked like it was wounded, and it was just kind of hopping around in between the ambulances, and he just fucking curb stomped the shit out of this pigeon, and I I did not see it coming at all. Wow. And I just do <laughs> mouth agape like, dude, dude hunts. I got no problem with people hunting. I like I like chicken. I like beef. I have no problem with, with fucking killing of animals. And this animal was fucked up and was not going to live. This is not going to make it to animal control. And they were not going to nurse it back to health at the fucking Phoenix Zoo. But dude, just he just looked at it and just decided – it's done, man. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do this. Stomp, <laughs> gone. I just f- f- fuck. Jesus Is Christ. The first person to call for on, on a code. He's just like first person. We should probably call. Medical. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your protocol? He's just you just fucking curb stomp him. We're done. <laughs> he was, dude. He was. He was a fucking animal. Oh, there was one night a bunch of us went out drinking. And he and another tiny EMT, um, who I think I think got fired for a DUI later on, um, <laughs> but but they got fucking annihilated, and they were supposed to work in the morning. So I brought them back to station two, like dropped them off, and I, I kind of stuck around for a few minutes just to see because they were fucking they were amped up. We actually stopped on the way back to the station. 
because they wanted to get one of them wanted to get another bottle of something, which he did. And then <laughs> our boy Deer Antler was asking about the porno mags behind the uh, behind the counter <laughs> and bought a stack <laughs> of those <laughs> and brought those back to the station. So I got them all kind of settled in. I went and he, I was like, "All right, fellas, I'm out of here. I'm going home. Good luck. Get some fucking sleep." I hit the bathroom before I left, and I heard all this fucking commotion. And I came out, and the both of them were covered in the fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking place was covered in foam. <laughs> and I was like, "You know what? I'm not even dealing. Good luck, fellas. I'm out." Yeah, and so you dipped out. I I didn't remember that you had been a part of delivering these two idiots. So I come back and it's, you know, like six in the morning, whatever. And again, it's it looks like a fucking snow globe everywhere. It's destroyed. I'm like, God damn it. It just fucking ran a bunch of bullshit calls for fucking 12 hours. And like, we're gonna get in trouble. I and these two idiots are too fucking hammered to do anything about it. Like, so I literally started vacuuming the fucking carpet because I didn't want to hear about because we're all gonna get in trouble. And they didn't have cameras or anything, but like, it we're gonna get investigated. So (laughs) I think it just ended up being an extinguisher that was used and a relatively clean station, probably cleaner than it normally was. I'm surprised they didn't put cameras in after the fact. Oh god, god, that station was such a fucking disaster. I, I mean, I had so many fond memories of just stupid shit. I don't know who was ever cooking in that disgusting station, but there was always <laughs> dishes in the sink. It didn't make any sense. And, oh, God. Do you remember – well, obviously remember this person. Do you remember the, the fatal funnel that we set up for one of our uh, female paramedics um, with yeah. a broken chair? <laughs> yep. So – so nine one fun. We had there one of the the girls. We had a broken recliner. We we literally like tried to like set up the room as like essentially a kill box and fucking like divert this person into this fucking chair. Like all other chairs are like angled in a fucking in a fucking I don't know, like a, a fucking triangle so that this is the only chair that's available at end of shift. So she'll come over and she'll fucking sit down. And like, it was more like any, it would have been funny for anybody, but like, this is the last person to get to the station. So we chose her. So we're all fucking sitting there. We're trying to be serious. And then the one broken chair you can't get out of. So she comes over and she fucking sits in it and then fucking can't get out and is like fucking swinging her short little legs. And dude, we're in fucking tears. God Did she damn know it. that it was a broken chair prior to no, she had, the- no, no, because fucking anything AMR has is never going to be nice. You're never going to have nice fucking recliners. Like, and <laughs> you know, we were probably fucking around and broke it ourselves. But like, either way, just you know, she just happened to be wrong place, wrong time. We picked her. She was the fucking target. Oh god, it was the best. And she, she fucking just, she just fucking screamed at us. It was funny as fuck. Like we loved her, but <laughs> god damn, it was so funny. Did you help her up at least? I, I, <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. She, I think she needed to help us up because we were fucking laughing so goddamn hard. We were on the ground. Just the usual like end of shift, uh, you know, things you do like watching squid billies at 6 a.m. and fucking, you know, practical jokes, you know, usual station stuff. Um, so 9 fun and me. What do you guys think your favorite fucking ems related prank was other than that in meets i i I know you've seen one of the the nurses that is a master of pranks do you think she tops it and what what was your favorite and same to you 911 fun my favorite prank that i ever did was when i worked with said nurse when i was her emt we stopped at a cvs for something and they were selling uh the balls that you put in a ball pit (laughs) They were on clearance. It was a hundred balls for like nine bucks. And I'm making, you know, EMT money in 2011. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'll just eat ramen this week. And I buy two or three bags. Then my partner buys a bag. So we've got four or 500 <laughs> balls. <laughs> and we just throw them in the, in the compartments in the ambulance. And we're like, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with these yet, but we're going to do something. And I don't think we did anything that night, maybe even not the next night, but every, every shift came out of the trunk or out of the back of my truck <laughs> into the ambulance and then we were sitting at i think we were at county the first time we did it or it might even been station two i don't know but 
somebody left their ambulance unlocked. I think it was County and they brought a patient in <laughs> and we, we saw them go and like, all right, go hopped out of the ambulance, grabbed the bags, hopped in the back. And they had locked the cab, just not the back. So we hopped in the back and we just started loading these balls into the cab through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Four or 500 fucking plastic bo- multicolored balls ran back to the truck and just sat and watched. And I remember when they came out and opened the, the driver's side door, because the vast majority of them were in the, in the, uh, the footwell. So they didn't see it when they walked up, <laughs> opened the door and just this waterfall of fucking Skittles basically came pouring <laughs> out of the fucking cab and they were hard plastic. So the sound they made when they hit, <laughs> hit the parking lot, it was like something on fucking double dare and we're like rolling, hollering and, and just the look of utter confusion on this EMT's face. Like, couldn't comprehend what was happening and it became a thing like if you got if your ambulance got bald you had to scoop up as many as you could and keep them and get somebody else but for several weeks like every er you'd, you'd see fucking balls and like the gutters and shit in the sewers dude that that nurse was fucking savage <laughs> with some of her pranks like dude one of my favorite that she did was one she just she, she loves fucking glitter and she's a fucking <laughs> asshole with it. Dude, she would put glitter in her flushes and she would fucking hit you with a fucking flush and you would just be striped with glitter. And dude, <laughs> like, like a fucking stripper, that fucking glitter is on you for the rest of the day and you got like eight more hours in your shift to go and you got just stripes of glitter and you just, just got to walk it off and play it off like, no, it's, 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 what are you talking about? There's no glitter. Yeah, you picked up a stripper at the club. Yeah, she she yeah. fell in. Yeah, yeah, she, she was, was awful with that. She had like a. Fu- I think she had a bandolier full of fucking glitter. She would pull out of her bag. Right, and I squirt people with flushes, you know, on the regular at work all the time. But I don't bring glitter. Jesus Christ, I wouldn't even know where to buy glitter. <laughs> She's a fucking psycho. Uh, when back in uh, California, we had a, a crew that they used to take the old cardboard boxes of. Um, that the IV bags would come in and they would just get a big trash bag and essentially make an open top cooler uh, for their energy drinks and bullshit. And they leave it in front of the cab and they would get the big hundred mil syringes and they would fill those fuckers up and dude, people will be doing shift change and they just do drive bys and <laughs> flush is funny. Ice water flush is next <laughs> level. It's, it's not quite as funny as, as glitter, but fuck it gets your attention. God damn oh. it. <laughs> I feel like the, uh, um, the glitter flushes kind of like maybe violates the Geneva Convention or something. <laughs> <laughs> like no white phosphorus, no glitter flushes. <laughs> well, she was she definitely would have been a war criminal because she would fucking pour <laughs> that shit into the air conditioning vents, get in, turn it on, and it was just fucking Mardi Gras. I I can't remember who came up with caping, um, but I remember I participated in caping. Uh, we, you know, you would essentially get a um a patient blanket and a bunch of um two inch tape and you'd have to get up on the top of the ambulance and essentially like tape down a blanket um across <laughs> the back on the top and then you just lay it over and you could write whatever you wanted because you know it'd be essentially a big banner and they you can't see it when you you come up to your truck but once you start going down the freeway this cape essentially flaps over the back and god damn we caped somebody and they probably went from mesa clear to almost glendale with a fucking cape <laughs> behind them no idea it finally flew off on the freeway at some point. That oh. shit was fucking funny. That was not that was not an original idea by me. Someone else did it, but fuck, that was funny. I forgot about caping. <laughs> caping was good. Uh, I think one of the other dudes used to put um, the foam headbeds on the the inner dually. Yep. <laughs> a wheel, so you would get like you'd feel like you had a flat tire. That shit was funny as fuck. Um, God, what else did we used to do? Well, our uh, our buddy Shepard, he was the fucking king. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> definitely tell the story. I think I know where you're going. <laughs> there. I mean, there, he was he was a master at breaking and entering. Um, <laughs> whenever you 
if if you knew he was in the area and you were leaving the hospital, the first thing you had to do was make sure that your gurney was on the floor in the back of the ride and it wasn't actually suspended from the fucking Jesus bars in the back. Because <laughs> if he was in the area and you backed out and then didn't check, you would hear, K-k-sh, k-k-sh. holy fuck, I hit something. <laughs> no, nope, that's your gurney. It's swinging from the rafters. Uh, Saving <laughs> compartments and fucking everything else. <laughs> There was one time where he caught a pigeon and pigeon bombed somebody's ride. And he threw the pigeon in their ride. What? <laughs> How the fuck did he catch a pigeon? <laughs> I think he did the crocodile Dundee to it. <laughs> oh, dude, when we when we have Shepard on, he's gonna have to explain how he fucking caught a pigeon on night shift. That's ridiculous. And then he used to take a. Uh, <laughs> the Glade air fresheners, the the bottles with the trigger, and put a zip tie on the trigger and throw it in somebody's ride. And shut it up. <laughs> he he got me with the fucking Glade zip tie thing at County one time, and we we're picking up like a behavioral fucking going back to to fucking either Riaz or fucking whatever. And dude, I open I open the back of the truck. I'm like, it's so sickly sweet. Holy fuck. And like, dude, bravo to him that he was ballsy enough to do it when we we're picking up a patient. That was fucking <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Like, it's clearly nothing emergent. We could we could have survived if we needed to take something. But he was clearly listening to the radio and everything and knew what the fuck's up. Uh, dude, we literally sat in the parking lot of County for like another 10 minutes letting that shit air out with the fucking psych patient. Oh, so funny. <laughs> Such a dick. But it was fucking great. Oh. Yeah, when you unload an entire can of air freshener in a place that small, oh, <laughs> that's yeah, so nothing yeah. like that your way, nine one. No, nah, man. Um, there's, there's, I, I have yet to see a prank. I, I used to work. Uh, I was um, a volunteer firefighter, um, and that was where some of the pranks would happen, but it wasn't near to the the shenanigans you guys get up to. That sounds freaking hilarious. <laughs> Um, I think like we'll unbuckle someone's gurney every now and then, or like <laughs> it's, it's very, t- it's very, very tame. Like I'm embarrassed to even say those two things. Um, but no, it's uh, that's funny shit. No, we don't do anything like that. Um, not so much. Uh, the the culture isn't as like friendly and and good hearted as. It seems like you guys work in, which is pretty great. Well, not great for us, but like great for you guys. Hey, be the change. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking throw myself on that grenade, but <laughs> no. I'm good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you have free reign to take any idea you learn on this podcast. <laughs> I like the taping thing. I'm not even gonna lie. Like that sounds pretty fantastic. I can see several write ups. Um <laughs> Uh, coming my way um just for keeping alone i'm like i'm looking at my future in this <laughs> and it doesn't look well it doesn't look bright if i'm doing any of these things you guys have mentioned <laughs> no no yeah it's all fun and games when you do when you cape somebody and then the fucking blanket comes off and goes into the front of you know somebody's <laughs> windshield on the freeway and they spin out yeah no it's these are terrible ideas no i've never i like i'm taking notes for when i become hr is what's happening <laughs> Yeah, speaking of uh, bad repercussions for pranks, um, in Orange County, I I, want to say there was one of the stations was fucking with uh, some BOS crew and they kept doing stupid shit like they do the the bucket of water above the door frame that you know that type of shit the fucking you know shaving cream or whipped cream in the the boots whatever. Well, this this crew went and released like several hundred crickets into their fire station and like i think that was fucking comedy gold they went and fucking reported them Uh, and i think they got kicked out of that station i'm like dude you pussies you guys fucking started this shit with them these guys are making like seven dollars an hour and you guys went and reported them they might have lost (laughs) their shitty jobs what a bunch of assholes It's so funny story. I'm like, man, that... 
That's, dude, these guys were trying to get hired with fire. You guys just fucking ruined their thing. Like, oh yeah. So you know, when you're in backgrounds, why why didn't you work for for this company in Orange County anymore? Oh, because they released ten thousand stray animals <laughs> into a public building. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's not like they were fucking scorpions. I mean, right? Oh, d- oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, no! That would be that would actually be funny. <laughs> they're, fucking, they're fucking crickets. They're moderately annoying. I'm sorry that it interrupts freaking ice cream time in the recliners, boys. Like, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! No, that's my biggest fear. Is just that if any of that were to break loose, like you get reported for the stupidest shit at my agency, um, like. I mean, like, like you'd said, there's a bunch of people at yours that don't clean their ambulance or whatever. And I make a lot of jokes about not cleaning my ambulance and I used to not actually do it, but like the crackdown has become so significantly like, it's weird, dude. I don't know. Um, I would love to be a part of something like that though. I might come have to work in Yell's uh, agency there. Sounds fun. You just got to find a scapegoat. I am a scapegoat, dude. I'm the freaking, <laughs> I'm the basic. <laughs> <laughs> I am the the colored basic. I am the scapegoat. scapegoat. Nah, you got you got to blame the VST. That's the only person that's lower. No the guy who stocks the ambulance and washes them. <laughs> that's again. That's oof, never mind. That's the Dude, basic. I, we used to always do. You know, clearly we used to you know wash our ambulance everything when I was when I was the EMT back home, and then I went to the southern division and they had you know this this uh, position VST. Uh, mm-hmm. essentially the person that would like stock the ambulance and then wash them. And I'm like, do you guys created a position fucking lower than EMT? That's fucked up. Like, <laughs> and dude, these guys were fucking idiots. They were the biggest stoner retards ever. And I'm like, and you want me to trust that they stocked the cabinets? Are you with drugs and like adequate supplies? Dude, they they would tag all the cabinets. I'm like, I don't trust these guys. Like, they're funny, but like, <laughs> like are you for, like if I don't have any if I don't have enough epis, <laughs> what how, what is my defense in court? <laughs> nah, the stoner said it was cool. He put a red tag on it. See, it's right there. It says good. <laughs> so I pop all the all the uh, plastic tabs and I go through all my stuff like I'm supposed to, like a normal paramedic would. <laughs> Make sure there's stuff in there, man. I'm trying to do my job right. Jesus Christ. I don't trust these guys. They're funny. It sounds like if I, <laughs> if I show up to transport someone's family member that I know. I don't trust this guy. He's funny. <laughs> I don't trust him with fucking grandma. That's, uh, that's probably why they hired the VSTs to keep you on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I- <laughs> But then it's funny because then they would be essentially like the soup Nazi in fucking Seinfeld with fucking supplies. Like, <laughs> why, why do you need why do you need four linen packs? No, 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 no. I'm asking for ten because I run ten calls every single shift, and you guys don't stock my station. So I don't I don't want four. I want ten because I don't want to come back at three in the morning for linen. <laughs> why are we arguing about this? Just give me the fucking linen. I'm not like I'm not taking this home to like stockpile and like I'm not I'm not covering my own bed with your linen packs. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I just I I don't understand why your job is so difficult. You guys order saline locks and flushes. This week we don't have any flushes. They're this like, no, we I don't have any saline thing. locks. They go together like ham and burger. I don't understand why this is so hard. It's because they heard that Level Zero podcast and heard about the, the caping, and they're like, none of that. <laughs> Not yeah, we definitely didn't prank the fucking <laughs> the supply folks anywhere <laughs> near as much as we should have. There's always time. Be the change. <laughs> Be the change. <laughs> dude, speaking of the VSTs, like and, and out here, like, dude, it would be little shit like, hey, my 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 ambulance doesn't have a traction splint. Like, I I'm gonna preface this, I'm fully aware. I'm not going to be using my traction splint today or the next year. However, it is required by the state to be in the ambulance. And you guys keep playing fucking um, musical chairs with fucking equipment. I need to have this thing because I will get in trouble if I don't have it when I need it. And 
they just always looked at me like I was the biggest fucking asshole in the world. Yep. I'm like, bro, I'm even being nice about it, but but for real, <laughs> give me the fucking traction split. Oh yeah, we've got it. It's over in the other truck, but they're taking that for the fucking DHS inspection. So right, right. We have the one traction split that's going to get inspected, and then it gets passed around. Yeah. Um, or yeah, and then you know, and then hey, not not only that, like looking at me like I'm an asshole, but like, hey, so you're going to go out to the elephant graveyard in the back of the station, and you're going to go find one, <laughs> and then you can have that one. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, these fucking BSTs. Fucking it's been out in the rain for fucking six months. Right, right. Good work. That was fun. That's good. You just, you just take a, a third rider and and have them hold manual traction the whole time with his feet in the patient <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Couple of them. Fucking exhausting. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to put my heel in your... I'm going to put my heel into your fucking crotch and I'm going to pull your ankle as far as fucking I can as my back is against these doors that are probably going to pop open next time we hit a bump. But it's cool. You'll you'll make it. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to get a good fucking write-up for this one. Trust me. No, it's... Uh, I, I, I moved the traction splint at least once in four years of EMS. But when you miss it, it's it's a big deal. Yeah, believe me, I, I don't have delusions of grandeur that I'm going to be using this stupid piece of equipment. But like, when you need it, it's the thing that does the thing you need it to do. <laughs> yeah, it's really important. Well, that's I mean, that's the same company that back in the day, all we had were the uh, the rescue vents, and then they started buying. I think they were LTVs for all the the medic trucks. And our fucking one of our supervisors called us on the phone. I was working in Scottsdale, and they're like, "Hey, where are you guys at?" I'm like, we're posted over here. He's like, all right, don't move. I'm coming over. I'm like, mm, great. So he shows up with this fucking vent and hands it to me. And he goes, here's your new vent. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at this thing. I've never used a fucking real vent. You know, I had assisted my RN with it when I started as an E with her. But I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? He's like, if you get a vent call, run the vent call. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this thing is. This has got 60 buttons on it. <laughs> fucking five knobs. And you just you just want me to run a call with it, and he's like, "Well, if you have any issues, just call." There, there, see this? There's like a bunch of flip cards attached to it. He's like, "Just call the number on here." And I'm like, "So you want me to call the vent tech in Pakistan, and ask him <laughs> why my patient is desatting?" I'm like, "Fuck you! I'm not fucking you. If I get a vent call, I'm not taking it. This is fucking retarded." They just wanted me to take a fucking a piece of equipment I had no training on, and run a very specific type of call with this piece of equipment, and I wasn't gonna have a problem with that. You out of your fucking mind? Yeah, and at least I mean, Jesus, the fucking LTVs had a ton of fucking buttons. Like that shit was overwhelming. Like I, I was a fucking nine one one medic. I didn't know I didn't do any of that shit. And they, the the training was not adequate up until very recently, and that was just due to our medical director not being a complete piece of shit. Yeah. Um, and you know, one, he's a silly bitch. When he comes in with a freaking chew in his mouth, and he's got you know more of a sailor mouth than I do holy crap like okay i like this dude he's like doogie <laughs> hauser that chews tobacco <laughs> and teaches is teaching us freaking and title and freaking vents and like okay good we're actually getting some good education i like this guy yeah uh, but yeah no you can't just throw freaking equipment like that dude that's that's such a serious thing and then you find out later like oh yeah i mean one all, all the to barrow trauma that you can cause and like how the people that run these called respiratory therapists they go to school for two years on this and right. they gave you they gave you a flip card with the fucking <laughs> the vent rep <laughs> to call that's insane and yet unsurprising did they what they just have really great confidence in your abilities <laughs> yeah oh you got this you ever play minesweeper same fucking thing <laughs> No, and, and I remember, you know, a ton of crews used to just, you know, because they would be super intimidated with that, which this sucks. And that that, that sucks for that crew to be even in this position. Like, like, oh, no, it's cool. I'll just bag them. <laughs> right. Okay. What? Like, I mean, yes, <laughs> but that's awful. Right. <laughs> and I can't imagine, like, I, I can't imagine my respiratory drive is dependent on, or you know, my my respiratory function is dependent on, you know, someone that's playing on their phone and bagging, you know, 
me across the street. Like that's fucking terrifying. Yeah, they they definitely got a lot better with the the education with that shit. But like, dude, vents, pumps, all that stuff was terrifying when I first came out here. That was not my bread and butter. And oh, that's terrifying to any fucking new medic. Because again, no medic program I've heard of teaches any of that shit. No, I get to drive, so that's all you guys' problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ten and two, bitches. Ten and two. <laughs> you get, you get to do IVs or anything. You have any advanced scope or? No, dude. Um, no, I'm just uh, your run of the mill basic. Um, sometimes they, uh, sometimes they give me a drunk person to transport, and that's that's when I get to write, practice my chart writing skills, and. <laughs> Lucky you. No, it's it's uh, honestly it's a really cushy job um i've grown to hate driving on my days off like <laughs> I just have my wife chauffeur me around town if i even decide to get up and leave um but yeah no 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 advantage i i can poke people with land sets that's that's my scope oh you can do fucking sugars <laughs> I, can, I can do a sugar yeah you, you hear that jersey medics or jersey ease <laughs> suck it <laughs> No, I, we can't eat. Uh, so I don't know. I, like, I, it was in question as to whether or not I could even do um, IM. And a couple of medics I talked to were like, no, you can do sub Q. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure national scope, like, basics are allowed to do IM. So, like, we practiced on the orange. I think everybody remembers practicing on the orange. Right. Um, so, but no, we can't even, we can't even do uh, IM too. I don't think I know anyone who's ever done anything sub Q. Except right. for, you know, you were doing a fucking TV <laughs> test. Yeah, no, we, it's weird. We used to have a protocol where you essentially would do, um, whatchamacallit, your um, anaphylaxis, you know, protocol for like people that like had maybe heart problems, that type of stuff, or over a certain age, you would do your, your epi uh, sub-Q as opposed to IM. That shit went away. But like, okay. dude, when I started in the ER, the amount of times I heard them say, make sure it's I am and make sure it's the one to 1000. And I'm like, wait, is this like, I'm just staring at them. Like, wait, is this, is this a problem? Like, Oh it's, it, <laughs> yes, it's been a problem. Like, are you fucking insane? <laughs> what retard nurses are pushing fucking anaphylaxis fucking I am epi through the fucking IV. Are you, are you kidding me? So like I, I was I was joking for a while. I was like, no, I'm single handedly like fixing our um, uh, correct or incorrect routes um, for fucking <laughs> epi for the department because for whatever reason I, those those particular patients seem to find me. Uh, but yeah, holy shit, guys, come on! I that and I, I literally had doctors like, hey, remember, remember, like this is clearly a problem that this is ingrained yeah. in their head that they're like even mentioning it. Like it's not a jab at me. It's just, this has happened and they, they're that concerned. Ooh, come that's on that, nurses. That's that Paul Rudman from uh, the uh, Avengers is like, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> you have to put that on a meme, man. Fuck, for real. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. That, that's a rule. that doesn't have one person's name attached to it. <laughs> like, okay. Just keep fucking tagging all the people that have fucking wrong routed some fucking <laughs> flexus epi. That's fucking scary. Um, do you guys, so you guys run uh, one EMT, one medic out there, and then do you guys trade off at all? Or so do you, I, I get that you got to be in the back for, you know, some of the drunks, that type of stuff. Do you guys get to be in the back much or how does that work out there? Um, if it's a BLS call, I typically will advocate on behalf of the patient. Like, they don't need a an IV or like if it's like very typical, like this person doesn't need to go to the hospital, um, but they want to go anyway. Like you don't need to poke them. You're like we're just gonna send them straight to triage sort of calls. Then yeah, I'll take those. Um, very rarely do my patients get rooms. Gotcha. Like yeah, that dude, I that was. That was a huge fight for us out here to be able to get the downgrade, you know, protocol. I, dude, I don't get why that was such a big deal. Like if you fuck it up, then you go after that crew for being shit bags. But dude, if you, if you're reasonable, I don't see why you couldn't BOS stuff and the medic and drive. 
I felt so fortunate, you know, back home that I got to be in the back and trade off with my, my EMT partner, um, Mm -hmm. quite a bit. And, you know, for him to get the practice and whatnot, like that was just so nice. And that's the only way you get better at this stuff, man, is repetition. And Arizona has such a, a, a big problem with having EMTs just be drivers and it's fucked up. And I, yep. I feel so bad. None of these guys ever get to be in the back and do anything. And then, dude, you just feel like a piece of shit driver. That sucks, man. I want well, to have that opportunity. At the end of the day, like, that's exactly what, on, in my opinion, it's just might be my limited exposure. But, like, that's what we do, man. The, we're drivers. Um, and it, I know, it sounds shitty. And, like, I know I have a scope. I don't get to use it. So, at the end of the day, it does feel exactly like that. Um, but, like, Oh shit! Someone's coming in. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Do we have a surprise guest? Oh shit! Oh Holy shit! shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, looks like we're going into overtime. But the one and only frequent flyers and dumpster fires has made it in. What's up, brother? I am totally here, super late. I definitely fucked this up. Hi guys, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just dropped in to say that. Uh, Oh, the well, that was a good dry run. Now you know how to work it. <laughs> you know what? It was really nice. <laughs> it was really nice that he stopped by for 20 seconds. I was just to make a, about to make a jab about being uh, being no longer the 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 reigning champion of showing up late to the podcast recording. That was like a good 45, 50 minutes in, but. I mean, I like that he he made his name Big Chungus. I fucking yeah. chuckled. That was that was fucking good. He kind of poked his head in like the uh, the neighbor on the fucking on every sitcom in the eighties. <laughs> Vern or not Vern Troyer? Ernest goes to camp guy. No, I like Vern Troyer. Uh, Vern Troyer much better. Like <laughs> that's perfect. Dude, I saw Vern Troyer at a P.F. Chang's in Long Beach, and I fucking lost my shit. And he was there with two chicks who I I have to assume were hookers. And good for him, man. Good for him. I'm glad he was doing well at the time. I thought he died. Did he die? I think he did. Um, this is this is quite a while ago, but like I'm glad that he was. You know, I'm glad. Well, also I want to say that I I want to. I'm glad for myself that was able to be in a restaurant that Vern Troyer also frequents because that makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> that being an EMT in <laughs> in Southern California, I was able to afford a fine dining experience much like Vern Troyer. So thank you. Yeah, yeah P.F. Chang's on a fucking EMT pay. Shit. That you fucking Mongolian be- beef is fire. And those yeah, lettuce wraps are amazing. <laughs> was that date night? Was she paying? <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad thing is like, to be honest, even, even when I was working as an EMT, like I'd pick up a bunch of overtime. I had a second job, like still, still, I think was making slightly more money. Not, not much, but yeah, the, the struggle was real for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but either way, it was nice. that big Chungus stopped by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just so fucking random poor guy he, he said to me like i was sitting in the, i was sitting there watching the snyder cut um and he calls me and interrupts this this lovely evening with my wife and child and um he's like are you going on the podcast and i'm like i didn't know that, that was still an offer that stood i just assumed that it was going to be like one of the other guys and um He's like, oh no, just check the chat. I think uh, I think you're supposed to be going on. I was like, like right now? And he's like, I don't know. And then he says, fuck or something. And like, I have him on speakerphone and my kid looks up from the phone, his, his little phone that he's watching. And like, I'm like, it's okay. Like, uh, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Cause, uh, Cause my wife's listening and whatever. He's like, I'm sorry, my language, I, I apologize, whatever. And I'm like, no, it's cool. He's heard worse from my family. And then he was like, Oh, okay. Well, I was gonna jerk you off if you came on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad for my family, dude. <laughs> but by that point, I had already turned off the speakerphone, so we were golden. Uh, so he wanted me to come on, so he wouldn't feel lonely, and then the fucker abandoned me. 
Uh, well, you did good. You did good uh, with Adam. So. I, I feel like I ate shit, but, you know, that's okay. It's a learning experience. We oh. pretty much feel like that every fucking episode. And then we listen back like, all right, wasn't as bad as we thought. That was better than the first one and the second yeah. one and the third one and the fourth <laughs> one. We're, we're getting there. You can edit, you can probably edit out all of my parts and have a perfectly productive <laughs> podcast, honestly. Like, leave my laugh in as sort of like a laugh track and then maybe keep this last little bit where I shat on frequent flyers. And, and like, that'd be, I, I'd listen to that over and over. I mean, but I feel like your laugh needs more like fucking wheeze. It needs <laughs> yeah. mi- minimum WPW bronchospasm, minimum. <laughs> I took my inhaler right before the show. So oh, I never, never, never before you podcast. Damn it. No, it's it's funny. Like, and same thing when we had uh, the admin on. Like, dude, this is a fucking goof that like the three of us and you know it, being able to have anybody else on. Like, it's it's just fun to be able to fuck around. Like, if it makes somebody fucking laugh, cool. If not, it's it's a hang for us. So you know. It's cool that, you know, we can even get people to come on. So thanks for coming in, dude. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. It was good to put a name or I guess a, a voice to the, the names. Um, I don't I don't often like converse with people in the real world that aren't drunk or old. So <laughs> it is different. It is an experience. So. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm both right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, where you just shout out that was that was my line and it's gone now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh no, I'm glad you made it on though. I appreciate you know, like it. I, said, I really enjoy enjoy your flavor. Your page is fucking awesome. Thank um, you. um but no, it was um, it was really awesome having uh, that you guys had me on. I appreciate it. And I really appreciate you guys' memes and your stuff as well. Like I said, y'all were an inspiration for me starting out. And uh I still am inspired and look to please you all every day. I'm fucking I'm gonna let my wife listen to that part a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on loop. That's my new ringtone. <laughs> awesome. Frequent Flyers just texting me right now. He's like genuinely trying so hard to get to it. Um to get it to work. I literally drove to my buddy's house to get a mic. Aw. Shit. That was your one shot. You're fucking <laughs> dead to us. <laughs> Shit. And he don't. Oh no, he don't even drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Oh, it's all good, man. Oh. Yeah, he didn't die because of us, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. You maybe edit that part out, just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plausible deniability. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're, we're safe enough here. We'll. We'll cut out what we have to. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm recording this in my car because I forgot to do an outro this episode. We really need WPW to get his ass back in gear. I am not a born showman the way he is. Um, But I want to say thanks for listening. And I want to thank 91 Fun for hanging with us this episode. If you don't already follow him on Instagram, go hit him up. He's got a great little meme page. Let's get him some more followers. And he's got some really cool stickers for you, those of you that like to slap shit on shit. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this when I'm half awake. And I want to thank uh, Frequent Flyers and Dumpster Fires for poking his head in the window. Good effort, champ. Let's get you back on the podcast for at least half an episode, if not a full one. All right, kids. Be safe. And we'll see... What the fuck is this guy doing? And we'll see... Move the fuck over! Jesus!